Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do a quick review of all the kanji resources that I have. From textbooks to workbooks to some flashcards, uh, everything that I have like on paper. I'm not going to mention apps and websites, which is also a big part of my learning. And this is not on how I'm learning kanji video. This is just the resources that I have bought to learn kanji. And I'm going to go through them and explain how much I have I used of them. And maybe this video will help you choose your own workbook because honestly, you don't need this many. I just like buying new resources and you don't really need all of them. This, I will start off with the uh, flashcards. These flashcards are from the Japanese kanji flashcards by Tuto. It's quite a good company. I do like their resources. Uh, they do for other languages as well and they focus a lot on, on language learning. I have their book for Japanese reading that is quite good but um, yeah I didn't use these flashcards that much. They're not bad whatsoever. I just don't learn a lot with flashcards and when I do I use Anki. So I bought these to try out. I got through this ones at least but there are many more in here uh in total there are 200 elementary kanjis in here plus uh audio and uh they also contain some vocabulary what i don't like is that the vocabulary is also written down in um romanji this is not needed they could have just used the hiragana script but for the rest i do like the way they work you have here the kanji the vocabulary and uh, how the kanji is written, the stroke order, and uh, this is all for JOPT N5, and I think some of them are also N4. And if you like physical kanji flashcards, you can check this one out. I also made a video, I think, where I go through this box. I will leave the link to it if I have it. So the rest of the resources will be uh, textbooks, workbooks, and notebooks. I will start out with uh, notebooks. These are this kind of notebooks where you have this kind of squares, to write the kanji down. And this one also has a page where you can write down the meaning, but uh, this one only has the squares. So I bought only these two and I do use them sometimes, especially when I make a video of writing down kanjis. And here I wrote down some notes, but actually the rest of the notebook is empty. This one I used a little bit more. I learned katakana with it and then started out some kanji. And last time I filmed doing um, the kanji from Remembering the Kanji book, uh, which I will also show. But I usually do not use these, well, I just do not use them to make uh, notes when I'm learning kanji through watching the news or reading or watching YouTube videos. I use just random notebooks and scraps of paper. And these ones I only use to like really practice the writing of kanji and it's not that often as you can see. So do you really need this kind of notebooks? Well, if you like to do some calligraphy or just writing down kanji and really um, trying to focus on how big you make them, these squares can be very helpful for that. Then I would say, yeah, you, you kind of need them. But um, if you just want to write down kanji and make notes and just write kanji multiple times to learn it that way, you can also just take a random notebook, uh, especially if they have this like small squares, it's fine. So I will not buy new ones until I finished both of these two. Then we will go through all the workbooks that I have. The first one is this Kanji Look and Learn. This one also has a textbook from Kanji Look and Learn, but um, I only bought the workbook and I think for me it's enough because the textbook, I do have the PDF to it, but it's just showing the Kanji and the vocabulary um, and that's it. Uh, while this one is better because you can actually write down in it and see the stroke order and just practice the kanjis. So I don't think you really need the textbook. And I bought this one a couple of years ago, but I only used like, I think the first lesson. Oh, not even. I did some of the exercises here. Um, and that's it. I didn't do a lot in it. I do think they have some challenging exercises. You first start out with writing down the kanji a couple of times and then you see the vocabulary that you can make with it. And then you start writing down um, the reading of the kanji or the kanji itself. And this way you practice what you have learned. And then you have some simple reading practice and 
uh, it gets a little bit more, I think, challenging with the progress of the book, but yeah, not a lot more challenging. And they cover 512 kanji, so it, it's it's a lot for a workbook, I think. Uh, most workbooks do not have so many kanjis in them, so 512, I think it's uh, more than enough to pass the job T and 5 and and 4. Uh, if we only talk about kanjis, of course, because you need also grammar and um, vocabulary. And I would like to start using it next year. Uh, this year I didn't do anything in it. So yeah, it's a workbook that I want to go back to. And there's also an answer key. So that's good. I, I always like workbooks that do have answer keys. Then you don't have to look for answers online, but you can just check your work. So that's always nice. And it's from the same company actually as the Genki books, which I also like uh, for like beginner stage. And um, yeah, this is more like for intermediate learners. And now we'll move on to uh, workbook again by Tuttle. This one was, I think, one of the first ones that I have bought for practicing kanji. And it's volume one. It covers how many kanji? It's not a lot that they cover. I think there's also volume two and three, so I don't know how many there are in here. Uh, 103 most basic characters. So 103. So it's a lot less compared to the Kanji Look and Learn workbook. Uh, but I did use, I read through all of this information in the beginning. Uh, yeah, it starts out with like the first Kanjis for the numbers, which is very easy, of course. And then uh, it moves on to other basic Kanjis. Yeah, I think this is great for someone who is just starting out. The only thing is they only let you practice the kanji multiple times, so it can be quite boring. And they do provide you with some key vocabulary, but you don't really um, do anything with it. You just read through it. And also they give the Romanji reading, which I do not recommend uh, focusing on. I would recommend going through the kanji and really go through the hiragana readings or katakana readings, but not use Romanji. Then the second part of the book does uh, give you some exercises for writing down vocabulary, which is good, of course. It's definitely not a bad workbook. Uh, there is no answer key because you don't really do exercises. You just write the kanjis and the words over and over. So yeah, I do think it's a good introduction to just writing kanji, but it doesn't really explain much about the kanji, the etymology or the meaning or the stroke order and doesn't provide you with a picture. So to use this to actually learn the meaning of the kanji, I think it's not very valuable, but to learn the stroke order and the writing, I think it's, it's good. And I think the information in the introduction does explain some things about uh, how Onyomi and Kunyomi works and also that some kanji is good, also have a picture meaning to them. However, if you're a beginner and you just want a good introduction to kanji, I would recommend another book, which is Kanji from Zero. This one focuses on 240 kanjis, so a little bit more. And they also provide a lot of vocabulary and it's a workbook and a textbook in one. And in the beginning, they provide again some information about kanji, which is always interesting to read through. But then um, the first lesson starts out, of course, with the basic kanjis and provides you some vocabulary. And you can write the kanji again a couple of times. Uh, but then you also have some like actual lesson that introduces how these kanjis are used and uh, then they introduce some key vocabulary with the kanji and then some practice. Uh, this would practice a stroke order, uh, but there are also other practice exercises that you can do, which uh, makes you engage more with the kanji and actually remember them better. Uh, they again, do not provide any picture or like uh, a story to remember the meaning of the kanji, but I think it's more fun to use this book compared to this one. And they also focus on more kanji. This one is definitely more expensive compared to uh, the Tutu one, but um, yeah, you get a little bit more for it. Since this year, I think there's also part two. I don't own that one. Um, I don't know if I'm going to buy it, but for now I'm not even through this one. The thing is I bought this kanji book when I already was learning kanji with one ikani and also just reading for myself and this was like a very elementary uh, knowledge for me. 
so it was a little bit boring to get through it but i did still do the exercises to definitely learn some of the vocabulary and just read through the lessons um but yeah i will see if i will buy the second book and if you like this book there's also a lot of free information on youtube from this author george trombley he has his own youtube channel where he explains the grammar kanji vocabulary and just makes a lot of fun videos to learn japanese so definitely check his channel out then my most recent purchase it just came in this week and i didn't have too much time to really go through it for now but this is the tobira textbook for power up your kanji kitai yo kanji Ryoku, uh, I think, <laughs> and it focuses on 800 kanjis, but this one doesn't start out with like the first kanjis for one, two, three. It it is really focused on the intermediate uh, learner. So the first kanji in here is the kanji for island, um, and yeah, it skips like the elementary kanjis. I don't know how many kanjis they skip, but I do not think they go through all the elementary. Uh, kanjis from like job t and five this is definitely i think for the intermediate learner and i know that tobira focuses mostly on intermediate learners and advanced learners they did recently publish beginner level book for tobira uh, but this is the only tobira book that i have so far i never used that method uh, however just looking at it i see they use a lot of japanese no romanji so that's really good and i also they provide some like uh pictures for the kanjis uh, how some of the kanjis why they look the way they look so that's good not every kanji has a picture but some of them do so like this one for um state um it kind of shows why it is chosen to represent the state or this one for sake how, why it looks like sake i think it's always good to have a visual reminder of the meaning of the kanji uh, but it's not always possible because there's also a lot of abstract meanings and i'm very excited to go through this book so for now it it is not really above my level that i cannot understand it at all but it is challenging so i really need to get the time to get through this book and uh, the other thing is they don't really provide you with space to write out the kanji multiple times at least i don't think so they immediately jump towards the exercises and they do provide an answer key at the end of the book so that's really good then you can check yourself because i think this exercise could be quite challenging especially because it is all in japanese so you don't really have a lot of um english explanation i think in the beginning they do have for some exercise yeah in the beginning they do provide some english explanation uh, about what you have to do in the exercise so that's that's nice and you can always i think find the space to write down the kanjis a couple of times but uh, they do not provide you with the space i think it will be very informational to go through it and just to do a lot of reading practice as well and then the last word book that i have is this learn kanji with yokai it's also from a youtuber that i like that focuses a lot on uh, japanese resources and this is just for fun um it's not actual kanji learning it's more like um a coloring book for adults about the japanese ghosts and demons so yokai yure um and it get, provides you with the name of the demon or ghost and you can practice writing it out so it's not only kanji but also hiragana i thought this was a quite a nice idea and i do like the drawings in here i'm definitely going to go through the whole book because i really enjoy it but this is just fun learning if you want to do something interesting with japanese but you don't have enough of motivation to actually study you can just do a little bit of drawing and write down a kanji a couple of times so i do i do think it's quite a successful book so the youtuber is uh, chad zimmerman i will link his channel down below and the drawings are made by svitolana kuwagina now we're going to check out the textbook so for textbooks i have four to show you uh the first one is the nihongo somatome uh jopt prep books uh this one is for the n5 and i also have the jopt prep book for n3 by this series for reading but uh, the N5 level contains vocabulary, kanji, grammar, reading, and listening all in one. However, when you uh, go up with the levels, you have later on separate books only for kanji. So that's why I discussed this book. Uh, it's not only an, like a general textbook for learning Japanese. It, the, the other books are really focused on only kanji. 
and uh, in this one it's all in one and you get this list of kanjis then you have some exercises with them and this kind of books by uh, Nihongo Somatome I do like them for JOPT prep books but I wouldn't recommend them to actually learn kanji it's just you have all of the, the kanji for that you the, for the level that you want to take the test in in one book that's good and you can do some exercises and then you also have the grammar that you have to learn so you have a good overview but i wouldn't say that this is good introduction they don't provide much information about uh stroke order or uh, radical so it this is just to practice for the test that's it what i would recommend is remembering the kanji so this is the first book there are three books the first one focuses on all the kanji and they provide you with i think almost all the kanji that you need i think in total there are more than 2000 kanjis in here 2200 kanjis in here so that's quite a lot this book only focuses on the meaning of the kanji but they provide a story and uh, that's it i use it <laughs> like a workbook as well so i write the kanji in the margins and go through the stories and read about the meaning of the kanji and they explain why um, they do it this way and how they would like you to learn kanji in general they do not provide you with vocabulary or readings if you would like to have vocabulary and readings you actually need another book uh, which is part two or you can buy the kanji learners course by Codentia. they have also around 2000 kanjis a little bit more i think even than in this one and the, here you can also write the kanji in the margin so you can use it as a workbook but they provide a story vocabulary and the readings the the difference between these two books is that um, remembering the kanji by Hasik, it really is focused on um, making flashcards and on learning the meaning first and they do have like this whole philosophy about it why you should learn the meaning first and then uh, attach it to the readings and learn the reading separately so yeah there, there is a logic behind it and i think this is one of the best resources to start out with learning about kanji learning about how it works and getting familiar with the meanings that's more than enough for beginners uh, and later on when you start really using it in reading you will see the readings because it's just isn't uh, realistic <laughs> to learn with every kanji all the possible readings there are sometimes too many for example this kanji for pain it has more than uh, one two three four five readings um so y you still don't know when to use which reading at what time so you need to learn vocabulary and the best way to learn vocabulary is through reading so my advice would be the same as with uh, james hasek is to not start out with learning the readings as i don't know as a memorization technique by this kanji has five meanings i have to learn them all that would be just unrealistic to do for 2000 kanjis. I do enjoy both books. I think they provide a lot of information. They, I, and I kind of miss the vocabulary uh, examples for kanjis in remembering the kanji book. So I wish they, they don't have to show all the readings for me, but I wish they had some vocabulary in here. So um, that's one like advantage that kanji learners course has. And then the last book is by Tuto again. Um, I do own some uh, <laughs> resources by this company because yeah, they produce just a lot. And I wanted to try this one out, but actually I haven't used it at all. So they say this book, you can use it to remember and understand again around 2000 kanjis, uh, standard characters, and they provide you with the origins and the meanings and a mnemonic tips. But for me, uh, it, it was not exactly what they claim. So if you look at just random kanjis here, uh, this one for map, they provide you with uh, a couple of meanings, but everything is in English So uh, or Romaji. So you don't have any hiragana, any katakana. When I first opened this book and I saw that there was no hiragana or katakana in it, I actually immediately stopped using it or didn't start using it. Uh, they do provide you with hiragana and katakana in the beginning of the book but then they don't really use it i don't know why they made this choice the only thing that i did was read like the first couple of pages and they provide you with some background information about this kanji so i think this book can be interesting if you already know the kanjis and you just want some background information on it they do give you some interesting things about um 
the origins and the different um, radicals in the kanji. But I would definitely not recommend this book for beginners or for someone who wants to start out learning meanings and readings of kanjis. So yeah, it, it, it is what it is. Historical etymologies and mnemonic strategies. Well, I would say it's only historical etymologies that they really provide you with. So if you want historical information, then it's great. But if you want to remember the kanjis, I would say remembering the kanji or kanji learners course. They're both are good books. Um, they just have different philosophies about them. And if you want to practice kanji and uh, vocabulary writing, you can start out with this one. Uh, this one is for more intermediate learners, but it, it does start out with the first kanjis. Um, so you can also start out with this one or this one. I think they are all good, but this one provides the most practice uh, opportunities and this one provides the most kanjis. And this one I still have to discover for myself. So yeah, that was everything about all my kanji workbooks and textbooks. I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope it makes for you easier to uh, find the right resource for you. There are of course other books out there that I don't own, but yeah, this is the ones that I know about. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.